ever wonder how to refine your novel with real reader insights before it hits the shelves? Well, let me tell you that today's lesson, we're going to take it from good to great, refining your novel with beta readers. So today we are focusing on the next step of writing your novel, which is the crucial step of involving the beta readers in the novel writing process. But Thomas, why is that important? Because Beta readers can transform your manuscript from highlighting reader experiences uh, and issues in their experience reading your novel, your manuscript, uh, that you might have personally missed uh, because we are too connected to the novel, the manuscript, making your novel slash manuscript more engaging and polished. But then you're saying to yourself, but Thomas, what is the purpose of a beta reader before we get into uh, the big of the lesson? The beta reader step in reading a novel involves sharing your draft with a group of readers who elevate the book from an audience's perspective. Very important uh, 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 phrase. Uh, remember, a beta reader is from the audience's perspective, their experience of reading the book. Unlike alpha readers who focus on the mechanics, beta readers provide feedback on their experience experience of the story pointing out everything from plot holes to emotional residence all right as always we like to do some uh, tips before we get into more of the physical uh process of handling not only in this case beta reader uh questions but also beta reader feedback how to take on that feedback okay so before we get into it uh, rule number uh, tip number one tip number one Understanding beta versus alpha readers. Now, the short of it, basically, you want to recognize that beta readers are there to comment on the readability and enjoyment of your novel, not just grammar and structure, whereas the alpha readers are more there to be like, you're missing some stuff here. The long of it, alpha readers often review your manuscript during the early stages, focusing on broader issues like structure, plot direction, and character development. More importantly, an alpha reader will read your novel probably after your first draft. I sometimes let them read it on the zero draft so I can make sure that the foundational elements are there, which is all plot. Uh, everyone knows if you've been watching my channel, sometimes the zero draft will contain uh, deep dialogue and immersive elements. But ultimately, the focus is I look at every scene and every chapter as plot only and not story. Thomas, what are you talking about? Well, narrative is made up of both story and plot. Plot is what needs to happen, and story is how it unfolds. Plot is the foundational element of your story, where a story is you as the writer adding your voice, your style. This is where the immersion comes in, where we get to go inside the characters, we get to use the senses, etc. etc. But moving on, beta readers, on the other hand, come into play once these elements are reasonably solidified, usually after your third or fourth uh, draft, right? You, you know, whatever. So uh, they read the manuscript as your target audience would, focusing on how engaging and enjoyable the story is rather than the technical aspects. And of course, you know, you want to encourage your beta readers to concentrate on the narrative's flow, emotional impact, character relatability, and overall satisfaction with the story or in this case the narrative well yeah because of the story uh remember alpha readers are focused more on the plot of the narrative and beta readers are more focused on the story of your narrative okay number two crafting effective questions the short of it Ask questions that focus on the reader's experience for instance did the story hold your interest or were there any points where you felt the pace lagged? Now, keep in mind, not everyone knows what pacing is. It's not a general term that non-writers use. So, you know, your generalized reader might not understand pacing. So to reflect uh, a, a more general question when it comes to pacing, so your readers understand what they're looking for, you just basically ask them, um, how did you feel the information the necessary information was presented within the novel was it too aggressive or too limited or did it fit just right because remember pacing is really the speed at which information is presented to your reader 
That doesn't necessarily mean fast is bad or slow is bad, but you do want to make sure there's variations on the pacing, uh, you know, because sometimes it could be too fast all the time and we need to breathe. And sometimes it could be too slow and sometimes we just need to keep going. Okay. So remember, fast and slow pace isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's how you utilize pacing. What pacing is, the speed at which information is presented to the reader. The long of it, when it comes to uh, crafting effective questions, is you want to design questions that extract valuable insight about the reader's personal experience. Avoid yes or no questions. Instead, opt for open-ended questions that encourage detailed responses. For example, what emotions did you feel during the climax? Or which character resonated, resonated most with you and why? Uh, because a yes or no question would absolutely be, uh, did you like the main character? Right? We don't really get a lot out of that as, a, as a, some feedback. Uh, additionally, organize your questions into categories like plot, characters, pacing, and overall enjoyment. This helps beta readers focus their thoughts and gives you structure uh, when their feedback is coming to you in an easier and more analytical way uh, when they act upon it. Because basically, if they see ca these are character questions, they know they're gonna, their brain is instantly going to be like, oh, all right, characters. So you kind of like streamline their thought process, but uh, allow them to ask, right? Uh, and finally, you know, consider using a structured feedback form that guides the beta readers through their response. Ensure you receive comprehensive and consistent feedback across different readers. You know what I'm saying? All right. Tip number three. The short of it when it comes to interpreting feedback. This is a very important tip because feedback is feedback, but how we interpret that feedback can change the game. So the short of it is learn how to interpret feedback constructively. Not all suggestions need to be acted upon, but they should all be considered. I'll repeat that. Not all suggestions need to be acted upon, but they should all be considered. Okay. The long of it, when reviewing feedback, look for patterns or reoccurring themes that multiple readers point out. These are likely the areas that need the most attention. Okay, you know, there's a difference between one writer saying, you know, I just didn't find this chapter very engaging. And then everybody else doesn't bring that up. That might be something you could pass on by, but it doesn't mean to ignore it. You go, well, what is it about this that they didn't find engaging? Maybe there is something there, but maybe I don't need to really do a deep edit. You know, it could, maybe it's just let me look at it from the outside. You know, the other thing is, and uh, often this happens where you get subjective versus objective feedback. OK, you have to learn to distinguish between subjective dislikes and objective criticism. For instance, if a reader doesn't like a book based on personal preferences, it's different from a character being inconsistent uh, in their portrayal. I'm just saying, if you give a fantasy book to somebody who only likes romance, and they're just like, I wish there was more romance, there's just no romance, and these characters, there's, there's not a lot of kissing, that's subjective. <laughs> But if they tell you uh, the characters don't feel like they're connecting, they 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 seem like they're uh, you know in like in the scene but not together. Uh, you know that's something to listen to because that's an objective feedback. That's not a specific thing, and that's important too. You want to look for general feedback over specific feedback. Usually the this is what I would do or this is how to fix it uh, feedback is probably not going to help you, but that general feel, uh, the things they're kind of uh, sensing from stuff, that probably has a little bit more weight to it. And this is why you have to decide which feedback aligns with your vision for the novel and which suggestions might lead the story away from your intended path, because it's essential to balance being open to constructive suggestions and maintaining your unique voice as an author. That's right. Just because somebody says something doesn't mean you have to change it. And their critiques does not make you a bad writer. 
somebody saying they don't like something or something is not working does not mean they told you you are a bad writer and they don't like your writing. It just means this is what they're experiencing. And you as the author slash writer still have the ultimate say because you're the creative force behind the product. And finally, number four, selecting the right beta readers. So the short of it, as we've discussed, you want to choose a diverse group of beta readers to get a broad range of insights and ensure your novel appeals to a wider audience while making sure they are also somewhat interested in what they are reading. Again, if somebody doesn't read, they might not be the good beta reader. If somebody only reads romances and your epic fantasy or horror, they might not be uh, the best choice for you. Okay. And vice versa. You know, some if you're writing romance and uh, they only like horror, they're probably not going to like the book or be able to critique it probably. It's not saying they can't, but you know, you want the best choice for your diverse readers. Now, the long of it, you want to aim for a mix. Uh, if you do find people that fit within that uh, scope where, you know, epic fantasy readers should be reading epic fantasy. Within that, you should be aiming for a mix of genders, ages, and cultural backgrounds to ensure your novel resonates across a diverse audience. This can help uncover any unintended biases or narrative blind spots. So that's also it's it's like a um you're getting people to say, all right, listen, you're writing, you're writing, uh, you're writing a great story that uh has depth uh and is not um misleading of those cultures or those people, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, by the way, this ensures that some of the beta readers closely match your audience uh, is important as well. You want to make sure that your beta readers closely match your target audience, like I had suggested, um, with uh, epic fantasy versus a horror or fan romance versus horror, because their reactions can be a valuable indicator of how well your book will perform with similar readers. Uh, I would personally include both avid readers and occasional readers in your beta group, but I would not include non-readers. There's a big difference between an occasional reader and a non-reader. <laughs> Some people don't like to read, <clears throat> um, which is fine. Every, you know, hey, and I'm not saying people who listen to audiobooks aren't considered non-readers. I'm talking about people that don't read they don't care about the books they just they want to live their lives and be done with it so <clears throat> they might not be the right reader for you uh i would say that avid readers might pick up on nuances that occasional readers will miss well occasional readers can offer insight into the mainstream appeal of your story uh as for non-readers they probably don't even know what they're looking for because they don't experience the reading all right, so before we get into the walkthrough, I like to just bring it up. If you're enjoying this lesson and you haven't done so already, uh, please like, uh, subscribe, uh, you know, maybe share the video and uh, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right, let's get into it. Beta reader questions. Now, these aren't going to be full fledged beta reader questions, but we are going to go over some ideas for the beta reader questions now because uh the screen is as it is i'm going to take that off okay boop, 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 boop. all right <clears throat> all right first things first so here's a here is some pace and plotting here's a pace and plotting questions did the story okay did the story hold your interest throughout were there any sections that felt slow or confusing okay uh, did the story hold your interest throughout? Uh, if so, how? Okay. And then uh, uh, here's another one, obviously. Mm. Were there any sections that felt slow or confusing and why? Okay. You want to always add those uh, those uh, enhanced elements to that. All right. So this might be a question that you create. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm going through. I'm, I'm showing you like questions and then I'm adding and adjusting the questions in real time to show you how to improve the questions. OK, uh, so did the story hold your interest throughout? Uh, that's a yes or no. So we want to add the element of, uh, of of kind of letting them 
go into the answer. And that's why we say, if so, how? Did the story hold your interest throughout? If so, how? You could even be like, if so, what what uh, held your interest? Okay. Um, were there any sections that flowed slow or confusing? That by itself, like if it was just like this, that's a yes or no, because I could be like, yes, no. Uh, but the NY, or you could be like, uh, how... What sections felt slow? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why is why is the better one? All right, moving forward. Another uh, category is character development and connection. So which character did you find most engaging? Did any of the characters... Okay, so these are two more questions, right? That sort of kind of like work together. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Which character did you find most engaging and why? Do you see how easy it is just to fix the question to adjust it? And make it more of a uh, a collaborative question. You know, like, yes and no isn't really collaborative. That just, we're just, <laughs> it's like a, a, why is the question there? You know? uh, did any characters feel underdeveloped or make unrealistic decisions? What do we say from here? Uh, did any undeveloped uh, and... Uh, if so, where and what? Okay. Bum, 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 boo. All right, moving on. Let's get my face out. No one wants to see my face. Emotional impact. Okay. What emotions did you experience? Okay. Okay. Uh, what emotions did you experience while reading the story? That's a fairly good question where it doesn't need necessarily an extender. Uh, this isn't a yes or no. All right. <clears throat> did the emotional highs and lows feel earned? So what you could do, you can actually do this, right? So what emotions did you experience while reading the stories? And uh, if so, what emotional highs and lows felt earned? Okay, there you go. Um, okay. All right, moving on. Uh, another variation of question is world building and setting. So, you know, um, did you feel immersed in the world of the story, right? Okay. Were there any details about the setting that felt unclear and unnecessary? Again, these are yes and no questions. So I, I'm showing you them and then we're going to just make them more uh immersive right so did you feel immersed in the world of the story if so what pulled you in okay and now that's a stronger question world building and setting were there any details about the setting that felt unclear or unnecessary okay so uh, if there were, if there were any details about the setting, what were they and why? Okay. And now that's a stronger question. All right. And then I also, I like questions like this. I like satisfy, uh, satisfactory, uh, satisfaction questions, right? Okay, these are pretty good. Uh, these can be yes and no's if you want, because they're just straightforward. But on a scale of one to five, with five being the highest, how satisfied were you with the overall reading experience? And then would you recommend this book to others? Now, I might add, okay, just, just to make it a little stronger, um, would you recommend it? If so, how would you recommend it to them? Or if so... What would you tell them uh, to get them to read it? All right. Sometimes you get really good answers. Sometimes they just say, oh, you know, I thought this book was great. You should read it. <laughs> right? They just like, check it out, buddy. You know, um, but uh, it's not always the case. It's not always the case. And sometimes, you know, how do we put it? Uh, sometimes they'll be like, you know, uh, for example, 
I had somebody say to say to me, um, what was it? Uh, oh, if you're into, what was it? If you're into uh, stories uh, that are driven, uh, if you're into if you're into epic fantasy that subverts your expectations while still allowing uh, familiar tropes to be presented before twisting them on their head, this book might be for you. And then you realize these. Uh, oh, I didn't realize uh, I was subverting. Uh, most of the tropes and expectations. Um, you know, there's uh, there's actually uh, in the novel I'm working on right now, the fantasy novel, uh, The Maven Wars, Death of a King. Um, it looks like it's going to be one kind of story. Like it, it looks like it's your traditional hero's journey. It looks like it's going to be, you know, whatever. I, I, I don't want to give too much away. I don't, so I'm not going to give too many details, but uh, it, it comes off like it's going to be a story about X and then it kind of turns before the first act even ends, you realize, Oh, it's not that story. And then like other things happen and you're like, Oh, okay. All right. Well now I have to be here for the ride because I don't know where it's going. I have an idea of what's happening and I'm following the character. It's very character driven because it's all, it's all experience character experience story like characters affect the forward movement of the narrative but uh it's one of those stories where you're just like it i thought these things and they are not the things that are happening and i love that it's going somewhere else right so they, that's some of the feedback i've been getting with that book um and i think that's important too you know like when you're writing that's what you get out of beta readers and sometimes they might tell you the exact that is be like this is where I thought it was going, and it went right there. Because, like, uh, one of the questions I like to ask um, is before before they read the book, I'll I'll say what wh what do you think the book is about, just based on the title. And then the other question I I let them read the prologue and the first two chapters, and then I ask where do you think the book is going, and then from there, uh, I'll wait till they get to the midpoint conflict. And then I'll sort of ask that question again. You know, where do you think the book is, the story is going from this point on? And how has it, um, you know, how has it uh, subverted your expectations or related to your expectations? <clears throat> and then at the end of the book, I do it again. I go, you know, did this book exceed your expectations, uh, uh, fall onto your expectations, or completely subvert your expectations? Uh, and if so, how, you know, like what, what about the story, uh, did any one of those threes and you get a really nice sense of how the story is moving, uh, more importantly, the narrative too, you know, like is the plot coming off as you want it to be, you know, so I like that. Anyway, let's look at the next big thing. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Pro processing feedback, processing feedback. All right. Okay, so we're going to take this question. Which characters did you find most engaging? Did any characters feel undeveloped or, or make unrealistic uh, decisions? Now, again, I updated the question up here. So let's do this. Let's bring this down here. Boo, 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 boo. Okay. All right. So I have two I have two uh, uh, variations of the answers. I have an objective reader and a subjective reader, okay? But, so right off the bat, which character did you find most engaging and why? Did any characters feel underdeveloped or make unrealistic decisions? If so, where and what, right? So uh, the objective reader says, I absolutely loved character name here, because you could just, anybody, right? They were witty and sarcastic. Just my type of humor. I found myself really rooting for them throughout the story. Uh, another character name. Uh, felt a bit flat in comparison. I didn't feel a strong connection with them, maybe because their motivations weren't as clear. Okay. Uh, all right. So this feedback is subjective because it focuses on personal preferences. The reader enjoys characters with a specific type of humor and connects more easily with those who remind them of themselves, okay? Which brings us to objective, all right? 
the objective one is uh, character name was compelling character with a clear arc of development. However, another character's names actions in the third act felt a bit out of character. They seem to make a decision that contradicted their previously established personality, uh, perhaps providing more backstory or motivation for this choice could strengthen their actions. Right now, this feedback is objective uh, because it focuses on the character's consistency within the story itself. The reader appreciates a character arc, but points out a specific instance where a character's behavior might not align with the established personality. And there's a couple of things going on here. I, I, I seeded certain things. I involved certain things so we can process the feedback. Because even though this is objective and this is subjective, there's still some stuff going on. So let's look at it, okay? So again, I absolutely loved this character, okay? They were witty and sarcastic, all right? That's just my type of humor. Now, right off the bat, when we're looking at that, we're saying to ourselves, all right, so... You know they're getting they're getting that character because it's just they're they have a a bias joy for that particular type of humor, right? Um, I found myself uh, rooting for them throughout the story, uh, but this other character felt a bit flat in comparison. Um, <clears throat> I didn't feel a strong connection with them, maybe because their motivations weren't as clear. Now, this is uh, this is a uh, Kind of vague, right? So you would have to do a follow-up question for this. You know, what was it? A, uh, what was it that wasn't clear? Like, how do you feel? Right? You're saying I don't feel a strong connection with them. What was it that you don't feel? Like, what are you not feeling from them? Right? And you know, where where in the story did you start or stop feeling a connection to them? And uh, what do you believe their motivations are? You know, could, you could kind of dig deep if you really want. OK, but if we go to the objective, this is a, was a compelling character with a, comp a clear arc of development. However, another character's actions in the third act felt a bit out of character. So this is all good. OK, but. Uh, oh, wait, this is also good. This is also good. Uh, they seem to make uh, decisions that contradicted their previous established personalities. That's all fine. This right here, boop, this becomes objective because they're providing their opinion. Perhaps providing more backstory or motivation for this choice could strengthen their act. See, I snuck that in so you can look at that and say, oh, well, it's under subjective. Well, that's the thing. Part of processing feedback, oh, let me let me get over here. Uh, part of processing feedback is looking at the feedback itself and breaking it down and making sure that you're not taking advice for, uh, or suggestions uh, of people's interests. Okay, you want to look at things and say, all right. How general are they being or how specific they're being? Usually when they're specific, that's that's a little that's a red zone. Uh, if they're being more general, that's a green zone. And the reason is because why are they telling me how to fix it? You know, they're not the writer. <clears throat> You're the writer. It's your story. Right. But more importantly, perhaps providing more backstory and motivation for this choice could strengthen their actions. That suggest they maybe they're not necessarily seeing see remember you're supposed to li listen to all advice okay so maybe they're not seeing the motivations that have been established clearly in the back right so that's different than providing more backstory or information or motivation uh to strengthen their actions it might be a, just a matter of cleaning it up clearing uh, cl uh clearing the, the the cleaning up uh, the verbiage and, and all the other stuff in the manuscript, but not necessarily adding more. Like, we don't need to put a flashback. We don't need to add another scene. We don't need to. It just means you might have to just strengthen what it is uh, you per presented. OK. All right. Deciding what to revise. OK. <clears throat> all right. All right. All right. OK. Oof. All right. What to do? What to do? Well, the first thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to analyze the feedback. First, uh, take some time to re you, you want to take some time to reflect 
on the uh, specific actions the reader found out of the character, basically identifying uh, the scenes or chapter where it happens and pinpoint the exact decision that caused the dissonance. All right. The next thing you want to do is you want to reread the character's arc. So you're specifically looking for that character in your story. So reread the sections that establish uh, that particular character's personality or motivations and goals of whoever they suggested was uh, missing something. Right. Additionally, uh, this might include the character's introduction or any internal monologues revealing their thoughts or scenes where they make key choices. Like I had suggested, you know, like it, it might not be about adding more or creating a new flashback or, you know, uh, adding a scene. It might just be about going back and just making sure those moments with that character are strong. Um, in reality, it brings us to three. Consider the plot point. Look at your plot. Look at the character arc and see if they are moving along, not only with the plot of the narrative, but the plot of their character arc and making sure that all the beats are there because sometimes, sometimes uh, the disconnect could be because you're missing some connecting plots. You know, you don't want to just have somebody like uh, I was watching a show. I'm not going to name the show because it, it ended up being terrible. Uh, the first season was good, but um, I'll say this. So uh, in the show, they're on an island. OK, first of all, these two characters, why they're on the island is very random. They don't, they aren't in the position within that, uh, uh, industry to be the ones that go to talk to somebody of that rank anyway. So they're on the Island and the Island, uh, 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 uh typhoon hits the Island, right? The big, the big wave and, uh, <clears throat> two characters get separated. Anyway, the character shows up out of nowhere. And they say, and I quote, I had just left the building and the guy in front of me got a phone call from his brother who is a pilot. And he had warned him that the wave was coming. So he and I ran up to the building top. I don't have time for that. That's bad writing. Uh, so they took, they, the plot point, they just, de they deleted the escalation. They were just like, he's missing. And then they're like, well, no, he's right here. Don't worry. He's safe because these things happen. But he had to verbally tell the character and the audience. That's really what was happening. He's telling the audience all this cool stuff happened, but anyway. All right. So, uh, you want to consider the plot points and make sure that they're all connected and they are specifically there and you don't just kind of like dumb over them and be like, well, we'll just reiterate that in uh, dialogue later. All right. Uh, sometimes you could do that. Sometimes, sometimes you could do that. You know, you could just be like, but you, can, you can't allow major plot points to be glossed over like that. You can't just be like, oh yeah, I picked this sword up, uh, this sword of magic up on the way. <laughs> Don't do that. All right. Anyway, so um, number four, you want to bridge the gap. Okay. This is where you decide how to address the feedback. You know, maybe you want to strengthen the motivations or adjust the action or maintain the action, but refine the portrayal, which is basically <clears throat> what I had suggested. Because ultimately, when you're strengthening the motivation, if the reader feels the decision, uh, their decisions lack justification, consider adding more internal monologue or tightening it up, all right? Uh, same thing with actions. Again, you don't want someone to come out and be like, oh, yeah, I know this was off camera or off page, but, uh, you know, somebody in front of me's brother called up their pilot who just so happened to be flying over there. Anyway, uh, so bear that in mind. So here's an example of how you might choose to revise. So let's say the reader found another character's name's decision to betray the protagonist's uh, in the third act of the out of the character, right? So, so let's say the reader found, and they were like, "Hey, uh, what's going on here?" So, upon reviewing their arc, you might realize that while ambitious, they've always prioritized loyalty, right? So, you could add a scene earlier in the third act where 
uh, so-and-so discovers a secret about the protagonist that throws their loyalty into question, this new information could provide a stronger internal conflict leading to their betrayal, okay? Um, but ultimately, you want to remember that the goal is to ensure that the character's actions feel believable and flow naturally. Be careful when considering uh, the reader's feedback and analyzing your characters because it could actually mislead or misdirect you when making choices in your revision. I will also say, like, you never... Well, all right. You know, we talk about seeding a lot. So the seeding is actually what leads to the earned results. So if a character is loyal, you should be showing them loyal. Whatever loyal looks like for that character or, you know, even you as a writer, you might you might implement your your ideas of loyalty into the character, which is whatever. Fine. Right. But you want to maintain that loyalty. You don't want to make a scene. You don't want to create a scene to show the character being loyal once. Like who the character is, is who they're going to be in every single scene. And we talk about positions. So loyalty is a position, why they're loyal, how they're loyal. Those are positions. So you can challenge those positions, but you have to set them up. You got to show moments where they're being these things. Okay. So you have to go back and just make sure you're seeing that in your story. Now, something I like to do is once I'm done uh, with Whatever draft, if, if I'm going to have alpha readers, I have a draft that I send to alpha readers and then I have a draft that I send to beta readers, right? So in both situations, I'll actually go through the book and I'll cut and paste each plot point on the page into the character arcs and subplots and main plots into a sheet I have. And uh, by doing that, I can look at the page and see what plot points are really being exposed, which ones aren't. More importantly, I could actually just read the beats. And to make sure the beats make sense, because I just literally copy and paste the scene beat. I don't like summarize it. I just go, well, this is the beat that represents this thing and allows me to get more physical representation of it. All right. Hope that helped. Anyway, questions. What's the most surprising feedback you've ever received from a beta reader? Let me know in the comments below. All right. Uh, if you haven't done so already and you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and share the video while subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss out. I would also recommend uh, maybe uh, watching the next video in the series, or if you haven't seen the other videos, eh, give it a look-see. All right, uh, live videos on Saturdays. Uh, July will be when this happens. If this video is out already and uh, it's old or whatever, I started back up in July. If you're not seeing the videos live yet on Saturdays, just know they are coming. I'm doing a backlog of a whole bunch of videos so I could have like six months or three months, whatever. I just want to have a ton of videos done uh, and scheduled, and then, then I will be able to focus on all the other stuff. Okay, final thoughts. Value of the reader insights uh, is, is all part of it, okay? Always remember the invaluable role that beta readers play in the final stages of your writing process. They provide a unique perspective that is often impossible for writers to achieve on their own because of their closeness to the work. Beta readers help bridge the gap between the writer's intent and the reader's experience, ensuring that the story resonates as intended. It's crucial to balance the feedback from beta readers with your own vision of the novel. While it's important to listen and consider every piece of feedback, Ultimately, the story is yours. The feedback should serve as a guide, not a directive. Use it to enhance and refine your work without losing your narrative voice and the essence of what makes your story unique. You want to use the beta reading process as a learning experience. Each piece of feedback is an opportunity to improve not just the current manuscript, but also your overall skill as a writer where you can reflect on the feedback to understand your strengths and areas for improvement, where you can practice not only when you write, but on writing itself. This reflection will serve you well in future projects as you start implementing new and improved skills. So prepare yourself emotionally to receive feedback during this entire process, because it can be challenging to hear criticism about a work You've spent so much time and effort on, but remember, the goal is to make your novel the best it can be, and viewing feedback as a constructive part of the creative process can help you stay open and responsive to useful insights. 
their comment on what they're experience, experiencing <clears throat> is not a direct reflection of your capabilities or skill. But finally, encourage yourself to continue, uh, 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 continue growing and evolving as a writer because each manuscript and each round of feedback is a step forward in your writing journey. Embrace the process, learn from each experience, and keep refining your craft with each project. Now, remember, there is a Way of Kings Prime or something like that, and it's like one of the first variations of the Way of Kings. And Brandon Sanderson released it for free. You can just download the PDF on his website. And uh, that's a clear example of an unworked... <laughs> unworked novel and he says it himself he goes it is trash it's terrible uh that's why it's free but just so you could see where it started and it was like one of the first variations or drafts so that's brandon sanderson and way of kings which is well renowned uh, uh in the world of fantasy and even he thinks that version is terrible so you as a writer you have a chance because even one of the greats, one of the professionals, one of the people that are writing and selling millions and millions of copies, they start out with a terrible version. But it took beta readers and alpha readers and rewrites because remember, all great writing is rewriting. Anyway, next in the series is writing your fourth draft and using the beta reader information and how uh, to get the most out of that draft. Yeah, I love it. As always, peace and harmony, truth in action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Love you, bye.